What'd you say? Doesn't matter after 60 anymore. <laughs> Just having fun. Woo! A make is a make. The 70s. There was a, in a freestyle contest. Yeah. You had to do a certain tricks mm -hmm. before your run. Before? Yeah, and then you have to do like space walk, but a certain way. Walk the dog in a certain way. Really? And with the dog, you have to go straight. You have to go straight. You couldn't turn with and it. And do it like 10 times. Really? Stop and do a kickflip. Then a space walk. X number, but it has to be perfect. Yeah, no scrapes. No scrapes, yeah. So this one, I start doing this one, I start doing it straight. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> you still got it. Like in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Freestyle kickflip? No way. Whoa. First try. <laughs> What's good? So that was Pierre Andre. Pierre was the, the, the founder of uh, Soul Technologies, Etnies, S America, 32, Altamont, a bunch of brands that have made a huge impact in skateboarding over the last uh, 30 something years. He is a freestyler. He's an OG freestyler, somebody that I myself watched for decades. I've also had a chance to hang out and skate with him more at Newport Beach at, in, in his home park more often and kind of get to know more about his experience in the industry and, and learn a lot more from him super grateful for that. Now, now that has a lot to do with the point of this video, why you're seeing so much freestyle skateboarding in your Instagram, YouTube, all of your feeds on social media these days. But right now, it's Saturday. This is Whaley Park. This is my favorite backup, backup, backup freestyle spot in Long Beach. And since it's a Saturday morning and no one's here yet, I am going to get a session in. I was up late last night thinking about a contest run and tricks that I want to put together for a competition run. So I'm gonna practice those, warm up. Let's get to it before it heats up too much. I'm doing that 547 in frame. That's the first sequence of that competition run though, ideally. You know. Alright, that's the easy part. Flamingo, whatever. You've seen it. Old news. Oh, that's the real kicker. So, Flamingo. Fakey big spin, a couple little twirls, and then front side on 80. Going front side, back side, back side again, spins, and then front side on 80. And I have to get ready for another front side turn after that, which I'll show you right now. Here's an idea. Let's just lose all of our speed coming out of that flamingo and then just start doing weird front side spirals until we are completely stationary and then put our heels down on every trick that we do. That sounds like a good idea, right? Let's make our skating look as sloppy as we possibly can. Front side, switch blade, into a one foot of 360, feels right.
What's good? So we are here in the Waltz garage. Um, last time you saw this place, it was probably full of Waltz gear. It was sort of our stopgap warehouse for Waltz. And I was packing all of the orders back then. Nowadays, uh, we've moved most of the inventory over to a fulfillment center. So if you order from Waltz, we now have some buddies who are helping us get those orders to you on time and fast. But that's something that we'll talk about maybe in a different video. This is a video about where freestyle is and why you're seeing it everywhere because it is kind of all over the place right now. We're all over social media. I see it all over YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. I'm seeing more and more freestylers coming out of the woodwork all over the world. Now, now freestyle skateboarding, like all of skateboarding, goes through its ups and downs. And a lot of people thought that freestyle skateboarding was dead throughout most of the 90s and the early 2000s. Um, but in that time, there were a, a select number of people who were doing a ton to contribute. And there were some people in the US doing that, but I think the biggest contributions came from Japan and Europe. And in 2018, when I went out to Japan, I got to talk to Masahiro Fuji and a bunch of other freestylers and organizers in Japan and kind of break down what their thought process was when it came to developing these events, these videos, and growing the scene. And it seems like there were sort of three pillars for growing the community in Japan. It was about product, having good quality freestyle boards, wheels, gear for people to ride, having videos to teach people and inspire people to learn tricks, and events, meaning competitions, clinics, jams, for people to test their skills at, and also learn from each other at. And I really do believe that these three key factors are what allowed Japan to develop the best freestyle scene in the world, with some of the best skaters, some of the best competitions, some of the best videos, and what allowed the Japanese freestyle community to become the most influential freestyle community across the world. We saw something similar happen in Germany, with great product coming out of places like Never Enough and Cirrus, with events like NAS and Paderborn and the Euro Freestyle. Now, now when the pandemic hit in 2020, I think it was a really wild time for everybody, right? I mean, there's no arguing that. But the one silver lining that we do have is that everyone was inside looking for new communities and looking for new hobbies. And I think freestyle skateboarding was in a great place to serve folks who wanted to find something new to do. Especially for folks who wanted to find something that was low impact, low risk, still was an action sport, and something that they could do without having to find a skate park to do it at. And when people did stumble upon freestyle skateboarding, we were ready with video parts and trick tips and all the media that they could ask for to learn from and to be inspired by. We had gear. Waltz was ready and willing to send product to people all over the world during the pandemic. We also had brands like Mode, Decomposed, Moonshine, uh, a bunch of brands all serving the freestyle scene. And events took a second, but the World Roundup went online in 2021, I think, followed by secret contests, and then the Thunderdome, and then the World Roundup ramped up again, and then Euro Freestyle. We were ready here in the US and worldwide to start serving people with events soon after the pandemic. I truly believe that having those three pillars to, to kind of prop the community up really made it so that when you found freestyle skateboarding, when you discovered that this thing existed, you had this whole rabbit hole to fall down with videos to learn from, people to meet at events, and specialty gear to do this freestyle skateboarding thing with, because that makes it so much easier. And I think there's one other factor that played an enormous role in growing freestyle skateboarding, at least in North America, to the size we're at. And that is these sort of superheroes, these, these, these stars of freestyle that popped up. And for many of you out there, you're probably gonna think immediately of Andy Anderson, maybe Asami Yamamoto, maybe Killian Martin, and I think those are great examples. But we also have this really fantastic group of individuals, people like Sarah Park Matat, Holden Bistry, David Faber, Patrick and Burns in Europe, Maylin Yi. There are so many people who I'm gonna forget to name in this video, and I'm so sorry, but you know who you are. These people aren't just pros, they're not just skaters, they are also community leaders. They're organizers, they're people who are constantly trying to bring folks together and pull people under this umbrella and connect us as a freestyle community. I think the heroes that we have these days really are the, 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 the secret sauce uh, as to why you're seeing freestyle skateboarding everywhere. So thank you if you're one of the people who are part of all of this, joining in on events, maybe organizing events, making boards, making videos. And if you're one of those people out there who lives in the middle of nowhere and you think there's no one else who understands or knows about freestyle skateboarding around you, just give it time, be patient, put the feelers out, you will find the people that this resonates with and they will find you and there's a community out there. So keep doing it, keep dancing, keep being good to each other. I still can't get that right, but uh, I'll see you next week for another video. Later everybody.